Hey guys, so I've just gone out and bought myself a Jin Ming J10 ACR. I got this for you guys in the channel just so I can take you through from start to finish of all the upgrades necessary to make this a formidable blaster. So I'll be releasing videos in stages from the real basic upgrades all the way up to metal gears and all that. This video is just going to show you all the different bits and pieces of the gearbox and give you an explanation of actually how it works. If you understand all these things first, then when you start modding a bit later on, when you do run into problems, you will understand them and be able to solve them much quicker. Also, there are a lot of little pieces and you don't want them to go missing. So if you watch this video, you understand where they are and how to avoid losing them. First up on the left side of the gearbox, we've got the mechanism that controls your firing rate, which is this plate on the outside which connects up to the inside of the gearbox. There's a little spring that connects to the plate to the inside of the gearbox. Be very wary of losing that as if, you, if that goes flying somewhere, you're not gonna find it. On the other side of the gearbox is pretty bare, so not too much to worry about here. On the bottom, you've got the two mag primer connectors. So when you put a magazine into the blaster, this is what turns the motor inside the magazine to load the gels up into the T-piece. Now before we take apart the gearbox, you want to take out the spring as you might get a bit of a shock if you undo all the screws and it just launches out the back. So remember to do that first. Just use a flathead screwdriver. Now when undoing the screws, be very careful not to cross thread them or to ruin the head on them as they're pretty weak from stock. If you can find better screws to replace them, that would be ideal. But just be very careful, do not force anything. If it's not coming out, don't force it. If you're trying to put it in and it doesn't feel right, stop and start again. Just be very careful with the screws because you don't want one to get stuck and then you have to drill it out. Don't forget the screw on the other side which is close to the trigger. Now here's the inside of a Gen 9 gearbox. This Gen 9 gearbox is based off of the Airsoft V2 gearbox so it's very similar. Most parts will fit but it's not the exact same just because of the nature of gel ball here in Australia. As it gets more and more popular, hopefully more and more parts will be built to a standard like in Airsoft around the world. As you can see here you've got three gears. For the bottom one is the bevel gear. Middle one is called the spur gear and the top one is called the sector gear. These will work to pull back the plunger and to compress the spring, which then once it gets to a certain point will launch the plunger forward and fire your gel ball. So the motor comes up through the bottom of the gearbox and then connects to the bevel gear. Here is the anti-reverse latch. I'm just holding it in with my thumb as it wants to pop out pretty easily. But as you can see, it will prevent the gearbox from spinning the wrong way. Now we move over to the trigger system. All that's happening when you pull the trigger is connecting up to the, these two contacts to close the circuit from the battery to the motor, which will in turn cycle the gearbox. Be mindful when taking all this part because there is another little spring and there's also a spring on the trigger. This mechanism here is part of the fire mode system. Here you can see the cables that go to the mag primers, which load the gels into the mag. On the top of the gearbox, we've got the assembly for the plunger system. Here's the plunger, which is used to pull back the spring via the teeth on the bottom. On the front is an O-ring, which is used to get a good seal when the plunger is going forward to compress as much air as possible in the cylinder. I'm just testing the air seal here and it's very good even though this is a stock O-ring. Sometimes they come a bit average from stock and it's worth changing out the O-ring, but in this case I don't have to. I will be in future videos anyway just to show you how to do it. At the front you've got the nozzle, the piston head and the tapper plate. And when this nozzle is pulled back by the tapper plate with the sector gear, it will allow a gel to go through the T-piece up into the firing position. And then once the gearbox cycles and the plunger goes forward, it will compress the air and fire the gel ball. There's another little spring on the tapper plate which is used to return the tapper plate to its original position, so be wary of losing that. This is a full volume cylinder. Some cylinders come with ports and that all depends on your barrel length. I'll be making a video on how to work this out with what you need. As you can see, there's a bit of grease in here which is a good thing as all gears should be greased up. Under the gears here, there is what is called the cutoff lever. This is what is connected to that little spring on the outside of the box to that plate which goes back and forward via the safety switch. When it's in the safe position, this will be moved moved up and will lock the sector gear in place and not allow you to fire. Here's an animation of the gearbox working which is pretty interesting to look at. It is really good to understand how this works so when you mod in the future, when problems arise, you'll know what to do. Thanks for watching this quick overview of a Gen 9 gearbox. Hope this was helpful in you understanding how the gearbox works and you can use it as a bit of a guide in the future if you do run into a problem and not sure where something goes. Any questions, ask down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.